How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be going over Apex Legends new update. Apparently they got a lot of updates for the new season here. Alright, so let's get her done. Alright, new energy. More action. Grab the squad because the games have a whole new energy. Drop back into the fight with uh, revivals. Feel your power surge with the new akimbo. Use two new battle senses features to narrow in on your enemies in the heat of fight. And more updates to make the Outlands legendary for all. Hone your skills in Bot Royale and hit the hit new heights in E District. Your very own neon playground. Customize stat trackers to suit your needs or your ships, and you'll actually unlock three new ones for logging in this season. Time to tap in, Legend. Read the full breakdown of Shockwave's highlights, include revivals and Bot Royale. In our dedicated bog here, if you go to the website, you can click on the uh, the link on the page there. All right, so the first big update we got is new map E District. Well, that looks pretty cool. Looks very bright. Yeah, it looks very bright. Holy. This map was designed to offer players a fresh and innovative experience. While it retains the core elements that define a great Apex map. We also push the boundaries by incorporating numerous buildings. Emphasizing verticality and creating varied landscapes. These changes ensure some of the most diverse fights and end ring locations across the map. Read the full breakdown of this latest map edition in our welcome to e district blog here so again if you go to the page and click on that uh, e district blog here you can go and uh read the full breakdown of the map all right so now we got shockwave map rotation the following maps will be available in pubs and ranked for the first of this for the first half of this season Broken Moon, E District, and Storm Point. Yeah. As an uh, as an introduction to our newest map, E District will be the dedicated featured map for our limited time. Let the energy of neon lights energize your squad with each pub match for the first week and each rank match for the first seventy two hours of the season. Yeah, it's going. I guess those skins go with the uh, new map quite well, eh? Control and recon class perks. This season, we're beginning a much more international push on what classes mean to the core of the game by bringing new tactical class passives to the controller and recon classes. Both will be, both will continue to bring strategic depth to the squad via interaction with survey beacons. <clears throat> and ring consoles but they'll now have new intrusic powers that better support the role in the team hey that's kind of nice since i'm a bloodhound main all right now all right now we got controller class new class perk zone overcharge controller legend now have extra shield compass when playing in a zone the zone automatically grants an overcharge of 25 HP shield capacity. This capacity is permanent while the player remains in zone. <clears throat> in zone was what they're saying, the white ring on area on the map. Uh, overcharge is lost when leaving zone after five second delay. Overcharge can be healed with cells, batteries, and abilities while in zone. Okay. If a player enters the zone at full shield, so overcharge pip will fully will fill automatically. If a player acquires a shield core that overcharges beyond this extra zone capacity, the additional charge will still drain normally, but the zone overcharge will remain. Oh. Zone overcharge will never enhance legend armor beyond maximum red capacity. Okay, that's good. Alright, now we got new quality of life. Remote pickup. Controller Legend can now remotely pick up their undamaged tactiles by looking back at them and pressing a button. 
Okay. Additionally, if a player abandons the area, they will prompt to recover all possible objects. Remotely recovering these objects will restore tactical charge. And here we got a dev note. Control legends uh, are at their best when playing zone position. This season, we're rewarding the behaviors and legends who don't want to skim the edges of battle hunting for evil. Instead, allow them to maintain an equal footing on the armor when playing their to their strength. Gaining knowledge of the next ring, keeping a good position will be important to maintaining this advantage. Okay, so they're kind of helping out the slower, uh, like, rap players that just want to go for uh, endgame kills and endgame. Nothing against it. There's it's different strategics for playing the game, guys. Like, it's however you want to play the game. Whatever you find best suits you. If you can find players that are also the same kind of uh, play style, it's so much better. Additionally, we notice that uh, many new players to the controller class struggle with management and management of their tacticals. This takes a step towards making it more desirable to experiment with traps or to feel more comfortable setting up shop with less worry about having to abandon your entire setup to move to a slightly better building. We want controller players to play with their kit more freely and do not have to do extra running around to recycle charges or feel locked into the setup that they have to move. That's nice too. <clears throat> I feel like this uh, season's gonna be like more fast paced already. Uh, recon class, new class perk, threat vision. Recon legend now gr uh, gain the threat vision while aiming down sights. Threat vision will highlight enemies that the character has line of sight to whenever using ADS, aim down sights. This ability will not work through walls or smoke, and it's limited in range by a type of scope or zoom range of an ability. Uh, survey beacons. Faster to use, 3 seconds was 7.5 seconds. That's nice. Since I'm a bloodhound, I use the, the beacon. Uh, short range of 500 meters was scanning the entire map. That's nice, the 500 meters. There's no point in scanning the entire map. No longer randomly distributed and will now be turned on with every map. Scanning now grants 75. Evo was 200. That sucks. I like the 200. Now pulses three times over 15 seconds with each pulse taking a snapshot of enemies in range for five seconds. That's nice too. Now release a large in-world scan wave. <clears throat> Uh, now release a large in-world scan that wave that players can spot to identify an active beacons. Enemies no longer receive a scan message that you've been scanned. Oh, 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 oh. Enemy scan will display along the edges of the mini-map if not in. Another dev note on this. Uh, we got a recon. Legends are defined as legends who are about uh, enemy intel and tracking, which is a core part of each character's play pattern. But to date, it, the only class benefit was something players had to seek out via survey beacons. We're ratcheting up the scouting role for recons this season, putting class powers directly into their hands. With ADS threat vision, these characters are now adept at spotting distance targets for the team. And now innately do something that no other class can that's nice uh with bloodhound uh before it, they kind of took it out but if you had a sniper and you used eight time you can track people up to like a, a good distance like their actual tracks and that would help me out a lot so maybe this was it's coming back somewhat again the changes to survey beacons should allow players to make them a more tactical part of the play rather than just a strategic element. The full map scan was really only useful to a small number of high level players and often the scan messaging would turn your team into a magnet for others to hunt. That's why I would pick and choose if I'm going to scan that uh, beacon uh, depending on the drop, depending on what I'm hearing, uh, depending on my teammates because I'll do a lot of solo queuing. Depending on what I'm feeling with them, I won't scan it. Sometimes they ask me why it's free. I'm like, it's it's free until we're surrounded by six teams and we're in the center. Or I'm stuck up there and someone's watching it. 
now being more frequent faster to use given more intel for longer makes it easier to use the beacons with confidence and hunt in the immediate area or note secure pass out of a poi for rotation kind of like that i like i'm liking this already update stat trackers we've made a huge quality of life upgrade to stat trackers and are severing out the stat and the art you'll now be able to set these on your legends banners uh, banner cards separately the art on your trackers the art on your trackers have also been made universal which means they can be applied to any legend banner card we wanted to give players more ways to customize their banner cards and let you show off more than just one legend there it's also a great way to show off your legend uh ships oh, oh that's cool Log in at any point during Shockwave to automatically unlock three new stat trackers to add to your mix and match collection. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Shockwave Battle Pass. For a summary of the updated... <clears throat> Alright, now we got the Shockwave Battle Pass. For a summary of the uh, updated Battle Pass offering, to pre-check out the, our dedicated blog and uh, infographic here, if you click on it. Uh, here's a TDLR. T I'm sorry, here's a TLDR. Uh, with the launch of Season 22 on August 6th uh, through Split uh, 1, we will give you, you an opportunity to get the Premium Battle Pass. You can unlock it by competing in a series of simple in-game challenges before the end of Split 1 on September 17th at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time. Uh... Play two matches in trios on a specific map. Deal a thousand damage on a recon or control agent in BR. Open uh, fifteen supply bins in any mode. Deal fifteen hundred. Deal five hundred damage in BR with a specific weapon. Uh, complete ten levels of the battle pass. Well, it's not too hard to do. Starting with the split on September seventeenth, you can get the premium battle pass the same way as before by using nine fifty Apex coins. You'll be able to earn Apex coins via the battle pass to get future passes. So they completely rechanged it again. That's awesome. The pal battle pass options now includes better rewards, and with the return battle pass challenges, it'll be a faster complete. Uh, it'll be faster to complete at only level sixties or uh, level sixty uh, only. Wow. Okay. Battle patch notes, balance updates, uh, care package, EVA, uh, EVA hate returns to the floor, oh no, blast pattern slightly, blast pattern size slightly increased, damage increased to 7 was 6, fire rate decreased, now it takes booster loader hop up. Four shots remaining activation. Quick load overflows magazine by two. Slight increase to recoil. Okay, that's okay. It's, it's not going to be a crazy overpowered. It just sound at first. R99 enters the care package. ADS safe speed increased. Improved recoil. New feature damage fall off. Damage increase at 14 at close range. Then falls off to 10 at 11 plus meters. No movement penalty when equipped. Evil cash spawn rate in the first wave increased to 100%, was 50%. Gold uh, weapon rotation, Mozambique Akimbo, P2020 Akimbo, R301, Rampage Sentinel. And now we got some uh, gameplay updates. Aim Assist. Console crossplay into PC lobbies. Aim Assist strength reduced to 18%. Console performance mode crossplay into PC lob lobbies. Aim Assist strength reduced to 22%. Controller on PC, aim assist strength reduced to 25%. DevNote, we value our accessibility across all platform game, but it's equally important for us to monitor the ecosystem. Experimental stories from all types of players tracks with the data we've seen when it comes to encounter. Win rate between different peripherals, Apex Legends is a competitive shooter. And simply put, aim assist is too strong. Aim assist will never be removed. That is a critical accessibility feature. Console lobbies remain unaffected. This has only impacted players on controllers and PC lobbies, our most competitive ecosystem. This change does not solve the in intricacies of all aim assist hot topics, but it should help level the playing ground. <clears throat> for like the close range, I would that that kind of helps for the like close range. A little further range, you still gotta have some sort of skill. Aim flinch has been removed from all weapons and most abilities. Damage from the ring still incurs aim flinch. 
Yeah, as it should. Uh, and we got another dev note. Let's be honest, no one really had love for aim flinch. No. Uh, especially when I was headshotting people with the sentinel and that. Like, the fool looking at the sky all of a sudden. We've uh, made the call to eliminate from all weapons and most legends abilities. However, this, there are some legend abilities that do benefit from the added feedback. Like dunking on someone with a new castle. All, we'll keep an eye, eye on abilities that need uh, additional feedback. As we see this change affects the game. Uh, again, like they'll change some things that seem unfair as uh things go on so probably within two weeks of the of the update loop bin reset starting with shockwave all loop bins will be closed and re uh and re-roll their loot wow with a significantly increased chance at high tier and rare uh loot at the midway point of the match bins that have been re-rolled will uh, appear slightly different than ones that have never been opened after the reset, multiple bins will convert into legendary loot bins that provide smart loot, guaranteeing that the contents to be uh, relevant upgrades for a squad. Mythic bin. One mythic bin will spawn into the match with one random care package weapon. Gold version weapons are those with the squad that is ran at the time of opening the bin. Medical supplies and grenades. Large evil bonus to the squad. To the squad. Ooh. Mythic bins are locked and require players to hold interact on them for a significant amount of time to crack them open for their team. Display it on the map and minimap. Uh, the loot pool. Reduce the spawn rate of purple and gold attachment by about 50%. Uh, Dove note. Access to high tier attachments in the early game has started to feel too common which results in squashing the power of progression over the course by the match. Uh, by reducing the amount of high tier loot in the early game, players will be fighting on more even turns to compensate for this reduction. Loot bin reset improves the overall quality of loot in the world, which should provide a much smoother transition to end game power. Yeah, this 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 season's already sound like it's gonna be pretty quick paced. It's gonna be a quick paced game. Like you're gonna have to you know know your thing at the beginning still. But you're not going to get the greatest of the great at the beginning. But there's going to be a lot to get. Uh, reorganization. Death boxes and Loba's black market. Healing items now have a dedicated row and have been removed from the consumables category. Shield cores have been moved to the top of the gear category. Dev note. Actually, that's nice. Because uh, you open, quickly grab. See it's right here. Boom. Open, grab. Open, grab. That's nice. Instead of it just you have to scroll down, sometimes it's kind of annoying. Uh, Dev no access to high tier movements in the early game has. Oh, sorry. Uh, reorganization death boxes and mobile black market heal items now have a, a dedicated row and have been removed category. Uh, on top of the gear there, Dev no these items are critical to a player success in Outlands, bringing them up to the top with consistent positions should uh, expedite the loot process and eliminate. Uh, some uh, tedious scrolling for players. Mm -hmm. The when you got to loot someone that has a purple bag, and all of a sudden you need their shield while you're just quickly going, right there is gonna be nice. You always know it's just gonna be a quick fucking. You always know it's just gonna be a quick down boom shield there. Uh, traversal, managing at the same time in the same spot as a teammate no longer forces both players to drop. Thank you. Battle sense, better ammo awareness and feedback. Critical ammo state will now kick on when a player has zero re uh, relevant ammo in their inventory. On screen, low ammo indicates uh, indicators kick on earlier, showing players more. Uh, uh, it's quicker showing you that you have low ammo. Paying for ammo will now display the ammo icon in the kill feed. When uh, emptying a weapon for all reserve ammo, will now automatically ping that to the player in need of ammo. When looking at an ammo on the ground, the tooltip now displays compatibility with any of your currently equipped weapons. Dev note, running out of ammo is never fun, and our low ammo states were set up in that way that didn't provide much time or information for players in action uh, to action on. These changes intend to set players up for more success when it comes to maintaining their ammo economy. That's kind of nice. A lot of people go, uh, use the light and... All of a sudden, you don't have much light ammo because you have a purple mag on it. And all of a sudden, you got maybe a Spitfire? Or you just go through ammo like crazy. <clears throat> uh, enemy health bars.
All right, next off, we got enemy health bars. When damaging an enemy, players are now shown to the enemy's armor and health uh, and our health state. This health bar is only active for a brief time. After dealing damage, then fades away. Health bars like enemy highlights require direct line of sight. Enemy highlight. Enemy players will now be highlighted with a, a red outline similar to how all allies are highlighted with a blue one. The highlight is most prominent at close range and intensifies fades as target gets further away. Enemy highlights are enemy highlights require direct line of sight. You can breathe uh, now. Bangalore mains, yeah. You can breathe now, Bangalore mains. Yeah. Yes and no. If you're not, a, if you just run straight path through your smoke and someone's just shooting, you're just gonna get hit anyways. Both enemy health bars and enemy health highlights can be toggled on and off in settings. Ammo and attachments. Ammo spawn rates. Energy ammo reduced individual spawn rate. Light and heavy ammo slightly increased individual spawn rate. Shotgun and sniper ammo increased individually spawn rate. Thank you. Uh, ammo stack ch changes. Light ammo stack size increased to 72 was 60. Individual brick size increased to 24 was 20. Energy ammo stack size decreased to 54 was 60. Uh, individual brick size decreased to 18 was 20. Shotgun ammo size decreased to 20 uh, or increased to 20 was 16. Individual brick size increased to 10 was 8. Hop-ups. Uh, disrupted rounds removed fr uh, from floor loot. New hop-up gun shield generator. Used by, by all NLMG, Spitfire, Rampage, L-Star, Devotion. When aiming down sight, automatically deploy a frontal gun shield. Kind of like Gibby. Uh, gun shields absorb 40 damage. Gun shields uh, recharge 12 seconds after taking damage or breaking. Improves Gibraltar's gun shield. Improves. Gun shield health increased to 75. Gun shield recharge time still... Uh, gun shield recharge time remains the same as his passive. Okay. Alright, weapons. Akimbo, dual wield two P2020s or two Mozambiques this season. By finding and interacting with a second P2020 or Mozambique to automatically enter Akimbo mode. Aiming Titan's hip fire spread instead of looking down sights. Attachments are mirrored to the second weapon. Both P2020 and Mozambique are automatic in Akimbo. Increased rate of fire, longer reload times, magazine size is doubled, optics are disabled while in Akimbo. Toggle, select fire to holster your weapon. Uh, secondary weapon and re-enable your optic. Well, that's pretty cool. LMGs. All LMGs now benefit from uh, reverse hip fire mechanic found on the care pack's devotion. New hop up gun shield generator. See hop up as activation above. Yeah, yeah. All right. The alternator. Magazine size changes. Base 19 unchanged. White 23 was 22, blue 26 was 25, purple gold 28 was 27. Car magazine size changes 19 unchanged. White 22 was 21, blue 24 was 23, purple uh, or gold 27 was 26. Devotion care package empty reload speed decreased. Gun shield generator uh, added. Reverse hip fire improved. Shots needed for max hip fire reduction to 14 was 21. I'm not going to read actually all these. Oh, the, the, I'm going to look at this though. Mozambique single. Uh, Mastiff. So this is the uh, Mastiff. Uh, damage increased to 15 was 11. Pellet count reduced to 6 was 8. 8, 6. It's 2. Kind of spread out. These were tighter before. Ooh. Peacekeeper damage increased pellets. Okay, all right. Wow. I don't know. I mean, more damage per pellet. But you're going to have to be a bit closer. All right, Legends. New class perks plus adjustments. Controller Legends. Class perk zone overcharge extra shield capacity when playing in zone. See above. Uh, QL. Uh, remote pickup, remotely pick up their undamaged tackles by looking at them, pressing the button. Yeah, we've already talked about that. Yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of these changes. And you can go over the crypto and all the 
different lifelines and you know all their abilities uh the map rotations though so pubs and ranked rotation broken moon e district storm yeah we've already gone through all these Yeah, and then if you want for the mixtape, the the dates and all that, it can slowly go down through for you if you want to. Just quickly look at it. You can pause uh, the video at any moment just so you can see the dates on those. So they are really looking for new players. Holy... Ah, I ranked. We will now implement a brand new reset rule at the start of new season. New season reset rule for ranked. This is for ranked. No RP reset for rookie 4 to rookie 1 players will keep the RP they have from the uh, last split. Bronze 4 to platinum 4 roll. Reset to bronze 4 1000 RP. Platinum 3 reset to bronze 3. Okay. So it's going to go down how it is <laughs> yeah and improve end ring and we're gonna go over some bug fixes now can no longer use death boxes through walls clean up disconnected players in mixtape firing range mythic weapons are no longer taken away after respawn fixed as a storm point zip line that could kick players off too easily yeah, way too easily. Like, someone jumped on, and then you jumped on, like, two seconds after, and it would knock them off. Uh, fix bad actor ping crashes. Fix prowler spawn, den bullet collision. Adaptive super sampling. Fix an issue that caused screen tearing. Fix an issue that caused legend banner poses to appear distorted. Well, I don't think they fixed the uh, duel, though. Uh, sometimes when you're playing uh, ranked and you end the game, uh, all the banners are yours. It's kind of funny. Death boxes. Improvements to help stop death boxes from getting stuck in doorways and blocking exits. I tried to do that on purpose. Should now be lootable in broken doorways. Will now contain the shield core if the enemy disconnected before dying. That's good. Uh, Legends users alt can no longer be used for free if you place it into a moving object and use it immediately. Bangalore smoke highlights should no longer get blocked by other players. Fixed an issue that let players affect by Catalyst on, on, uh, Ultimate to uh, see through Bangalore smoke. Movement hitch when using Sears passive while unarmed should no longer occur. No more thefts from an explosive hold without warning. Destroying Lobo's Black Market. That's cool. Quality of life. Mantling on the same location as a teammate won't knock you down. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Mixtape gameplay. Additional starting grenade ad added for control and lockdown. Eva 8 back into close quarters loaded. Faster health regain for all mixtape modes. Lockdown score limit reduced to 400 was 500. Reconnect match timer reduced to 2 minutes was 5 minutes. Team deathmatch score limited reduced to 40 was 50. Mixtape skull town got a spawn audit. Uh, adjusting positions and angles. Nessies can once again bounce to the heart's content in the firing range. Not just anywhere else. Speaking of, a new Nessie with an appreciation for cinema has appeared around the firing range. So if you like to go to firing range and check out Nessie, they got a new one. Graphics, largely optimized performance mode on Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 for more consistent frame rates and fewer resolution drops. Xbox Series X and X, uh, PS5 can expect 10 frames per second or higher improvements in GPU and TED scenarios. That's crazy. A 10 percent or 10 frames. That's really good. Uh, DirectX 12 for PC fixed several causes of graphical uh, corruption issues. Large optimizations to both CPU and GPU performance. With these changes, we expect the DirectX 12 beta should now perform better than DirectX 11 for the majority of players. Uh, for like, if you have a lot, a lot of newer kind of components, it's really hard to put all of it in. 
soon as they get components though and uh, test them. They'll update it, of course. Uh, mitigated the performance impacting of looking at death boxes and intermittent uh, performance spikes from championship from champions banners. Okay. All right, that's it for the new update, guys. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if any of these updates you like, dislike. Let me know. Uh, there has been a few updates that I kind of like as a Bloodhound main. Uh, as someone that actually likes the Sentinel, I can see where um, a couple of things can help me out as well. Uh, the new map looks pretty cool. It seems pretty bright. I'm not sure how well that's going to work for some PCs. Uh, you might have to lower your resolution to keep the same amount of frames if you are just at your monitor's refresh rate. Um, just by looking at the map, it's going to be probably more GPU intensive than, uh, the other maps that we have. Again, thank you all for watching. Uh, this has been, uh, a great changes from, uh, EA. Uh, I'm glad they made the, uh, battle pass free again. And they also made it the first ones free. That's kind of nice too. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think, uh, really want to know uh so let me know if you like this kind of content smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and as always don't forget to get her done